China is slowly selling off their US debt, a process which has continued to be an issue for years, but there is no reason to worry. The Fed has begun QE4 right on time to save the day, an excellent project guaranteed to devalue the currency. Nobody will notice though, because all countries are doing the same thing. A race to the bottom and nobody wins. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today the topic is US debt. First, I want to take a look at the major foreign holders of treasury securities, something that I show you on a monthly basis here on the channel. I'm going to give you all the data you need to know about that. Then we're going to take a look at what's going on with the repo operations and the madness that is happening right now underneath our noses in the financial system, but you won't hear about it in the mainstream media. The politicians are distracted with other garbage and those in the financial industry industry are pretending that it's oh so good. The Federal Reserve has begun QE4 officially and this is supposedly coming at a time when we are seeing new highs all over the place. The economy is doing well, stocks are doing fantastic, everything is just fine except for one problem. The cracks have emerged in the financial system and this is only the beginning. Let's get into it right away. Take a look at the major foreign holders of treasury securities. This information, as always, comes directly from the source. I'm giving you this from treasury.gov. If you want to check it out, you can just type that into a search engine. It will come up as the first result. Here we're looking at Japan being the number one holder of U.S. debt. They surpassed China just recently. And of course, this is always in flux depending on who's buying, who's selling. As of right now, Japan is in first, then China, and then in in a distant third place, we have the UK. You can look through this list if you're interested. Maybe it's one of your countries or maybe just a country that you would like to know more about. You could see how much they actually own, what they've been doing over the last year, and it just gives you some insight as to what's happening in these countries. Are they buying? Are they selling? What's going on geopolitically? Is that a factor at all? You can see the totals on the list as well. This is really telling. However, there's a couple countries on here that might be put a bunch of question marks for you. So I'm going to give you this information in a graph in just a moment, but wanted to show you this first. U.S. net foreign transaction flows. We haven't seen it at this level since the end of 2018. If you remember what was happening in the fourth quarter of 2018, people were selling off equities. They were moving to cash, moving to money market. They were doing things that hadn't been done since the financial crisis. They believed that this was the time that the stock market would collapse. And of course, we saw some extreme upheaval around in the markets, geopolitical. Politically, there were problems. A lot was going on. Today, we are seeing some of that, at least in this particular instance. Things are different than what we saw last year. And of course, the year before, there's always things changing every single day. But this just shows you statistically what's happened. Now, I look at a lot of this information and I have to think to myself, what exchange rate two countries have is going to make a difference in whether they will do business. Are they able to do business at a a favorable rate, favorable terms between both sides if the exchange rates are really out of flux. So that could be impacting what we are seeing today because the US dollar is definitely dominant and that could be good in some cases for some people, but in other cases, it might actually hinder some of the exports coming out of the US. It could be an issue as well. Look at Switzerland, what they had to do by pegging their currency to the euro at 120 simply because that would hurt exports. We've seen this before time and time again, countries devalue their currency just like Mexico had done during the peso crisis. We look at all of this and have to think to ourselves, what does the future have in store? Well, I want to show you a couple countries here in these graphs, and I wanted to begin with China. Here you can see what has happened over the last couple years. Essentially, China has been selling off their treasuries. This has been a process that has been slow. It's been methodical. And if this chart were to go beyond 2016, so let's say 2015, we would see that this has basically been a trend the entire time. Although there was this discrepancy towards 2016, 2017, you will definitely see 
see that trend there. Ultimately, they had, I believe it was something like $1.3 trillion at the peak. And ever since then, they have been reducing that. Some people point to what they're doing with their own currency here. Ultimately, I do believe that they are trying to, very slowly, of course, trying to wean off of the US dollar. There's a lot of talk that I've been seeing about what China is doing and they have no control or they're controlling too much. There's an unlimited amount of excuses. But what I have seen, and there's no question about this, is that when we saw the Chinese currency hit seven to the US dollar, it was a big freak out in the markets. They were starting to say that, okay, China is a manipulator of their currency. This is terrible. How are they ever going to get away with this? And then it creeped up to 7.1. Then it was 7.15. And then it kept going higher and higher. And we saw that this had been a problem, but they kind of ignore it now. And nothing has really changed. But here we are today seeing their currency being devalued at this level, which we have not seen for a very long time. Japan holding of US treasuries have increased all throughout the fourth quarter of 2018 into 2019. So we are going back to a level we haven't seen since approximately the end of 2014. Big changes are happening here. But as I mentioned in the introduction, the Fed might have to be the buyer of last resort. They're doing so today and it seems like nothing in that respect has ever changed. Belgium holdings of US treasuries. This has increased from 2017 all the way through into 2019 and also came in islands holdings of US treasuries. There have been some changes 2016, 2017, but ultimately we can see the trend and that is more and more and more purchases. Now, when you look at places like Belgium, like Cayman Islands, these countries here are often thought to be a shell for other corporations, hedge funds, and so on. So I don't think the actual country Cayman Islands is buying US debt. So we don't exactly have a clear picture, but generally that's what is understood. It's most likely hedge funds, investment companies buying in. When we see the changes that are happening in this case here, it just gives you some insight as to what investors are doing on a global level. Here you can see the world gold holdings versus the world treasury holdings. And it looks like we are witnessing money flowing into gold. Much of this, of course, is paper gold. The physical gold market is extremely small. Paper gold market has been multiplied many, many fold above that. But even in the paper markets, it is interesting to see how money flows into it when there are tough times, when there are concerns about what's happening in the future. Future, it seems like a lot of these countries, central banks, investment companies, investors, and so on are moving the money into gold. We have watched it stagnate for years, and now it has moved into that territory around 1500 and seems to be relatively stable. The yield curve inversion is something that everybody talks about in my videos. I had been covering it as it was happening just to give you updates on that. And we can see that it had moved down below into negative territory and has since actually steepened. OK, so after the inversion, it stayed here for a few months and then has since made its way back up. And it is in this time frame when it makes its way back up that is the signal historically that things are about to change. This is not very good for the future, that's for sure. Every single time we see this, a recession follows. It could be tomorrow, could be next year, not sure about that, but ultimately it has been a 100% accurate indicator. So it's just interesting to see. This is not a joke. I'm about to read you an actual title out of Bloomberg. Fed blames sharks and strong dollar for slow Cape Cod tourism. They go into the reasons why in the Fed Beige book, which I think people should read if they're interested in getting some data. And it gives you insight as to what all of the different Federal Reserve banks are thinking at that moment. So we get some insight and you can see the differences between all of the different individuals and not 
just hear Jerome Powell speaking and then of course even from that speech people are only getting a tidbit or two the talking points that everybody already knows you can actually see these reports they're not that long all you got to do is search fed beige book to get that so in the beige book this time around it was interesting because so many of them are talking about the hurricanes they're talking about the sharks and they're saying that this was a problem and that's why we saw some slowdown happening they never ever admit that there is a slowing economy my goodness i can't believe it. every time they use it as some ridiculous excuse it was really cold this winter so the economy took a hit but that's just seasonal don't worry we're gonna seasonally adjust all of the data and then it's gonna look just fine it's so stupid it's so garbage but again that's what we have to deal with every day Okay, let's get into it. We're looking at the repo operations, oversubscribed yet again. I mean, look at what has happened. We were told this was temporary. You've heard me talk about this 100 times before. I'm not going to bore you. Here you can see what has happened. has been trending upward now at the absolute maximum. We have been lied to over and over again about this, and I'm not going to take it. I know you're not either. Even though I have seen an onslaught of repeated badgering constantly in the comment section people saying you don't know what the hell you're talking about you're fear mongering you're this you're that and meanwhile they don't even know what this is about they have no idea that this is actually a problem they don't understand the repo operations they never heard about it before and yet they are still willing to be critical why because they're worried about their seven shares of amazon now understand i know how tough this can be when your savings is at risk if you are in invested in something let's say with your 401k you're obviously going to be defensive about it i understand that but you should be humble about it that's the difference you could see here on this particular page directly from the new york fed website you can see the oversubscribed fed repos last night okay as i record this it shows you 80 billion dollars maxing out of course at 75 billion this is not a good sign because it is persisting and it seems to be getting worse this page here repurchase agreement operational details if you're interested you can just see what they plan on doing looking at all the dates looking at their actual operation limit everything you need to know is right here links will all be in the description as always now the financial times had a really good article about the repos and if you have time probably about five minutes or so i would read this article if there's any that you need to read today this is definitely the one link will be in the description of course but let me touch on some points Money market funds that are among the largest holders of U.S. Treasury bills say that they are reluctant to sell them to the Federal Reserve, presenting an obstacle to the central bank as it seeks to increase the amount of cash in short-term lending markets. So the Federal Reserve is trying to do one thing. They're trying to create a solution to the crisis that is unfolding, and yet the banks are kind of saying, you know what, I'm not really interested in doing this. I just want to sit on the sidelines. And there's a reason for that I'll get into in just a second. The Fed announced last Friday that it would begin monthly purchases of roughly $60 billion of treasury bills, which have a maturity of less than 12 months, in an attempt to inject money into the financial system following a cash squeeze that sent overnight repo lending rates surging in September. Okay, but we're not going to call this QE. I just want to make that very clear. This is not QE. Okay, don't be distracted by the QE and the fact that I'm repeating it over and over again. It is not QE. I just want to make that very clear. And just one more time before I stop talking about QE, that this is definitely not QE. Don't worry about QE. Many investors have expected the Fed to act, but were surprised by the size of the planned purchases, with some questioning how the central bank would be able to buy the debt without pushing down yields in the $2.3 trillion market. They can't even get control of this, and they're going to have to go to an extreme level. What we are seeing today is nothing compared to what we will see. The problem facing Facing managers of money market funds which are permitted to buy assets with no more than 13 months to maturity is that they would rather keep the treasury bills now in their possession than sell them to the Fed and then go back into the market to buy debt with potentially lower yields. You see, when you intervene in the market, you only make it worse. The Federal Reserve is actually compounding a problem. It's exacerbating the existing problem today. They can't fix it. Don't ever believe that these QE, oops, I said it, loving people are able to fix it.
we are not going to sell them. This person here said that it's a short term gain and then I would have to replace it with something else at a much lower rate. And of course, they don't want to do that. They are simply going to hang on. It's just interesting to see the way that this is playing out and the investors are hoping and praying that everything works out. But of course, they have no real other options. They've invested everything, pedal to the metal, leverage. I see comments all the time. I use leverage and it's fantastic. I have made, quote unquote, made a lot of money. Now this article here talks about QE, but we're allowed to say that if it's in the ECB, if it's in Europe. ECB's Holtzman says that Draghi's QE policy is counterproductive. Several members of the ECB governing council are against the ECB buying more bonds, and that's according to the Austrian Central Bank governor. The view was that the attempt to inject even more liquidity isn't good, even counterproductive. Several governors didn't consider this proposal the right policy for the purpose. Can you believe it? Can you believe that a central banker is actually saying that maybe more QE isn't the answer? Of course it's not. We have seen a policy of QE going into place in all these different countries, but let's just focus on the ECB for a moment. We have watched them struggle to keep towards that 2% inflation mark, not even close, even though they have printed trillions and trillions of euro. And this has been nothing but a failure the entire time, failure after failure after failure. The Euro sovereign debt crisis only got worse. Today, conditions are worse, but we keep hearing about this future event that's going to happen, that everything is going to be okay. We get these growth prospects that are never achieved, even with all of their manipulations. Still, 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 we get dismal growth and nothing but devalued currencies. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, smash the like button, smash it, drop kick it, buy slam it, do whatever you got to do in order to support the channel. I do appreciate that. If you want to make money, if you want to build a business, if you want to learn how to make money online, this is for you. I have a free 100% free e-course. It's called the Amazon GPS. Check it out at the Amazon GPS.com. If you're interested in the financial system, talking about everything from the Euro sovereign debt crisis, talking about what's happening with the Federal Reserve, the central banking system, everything in between, these two books have it all. They fit into each other like lock and key. So definitely take a look at the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. Wait a second, hold on, don't go anywhere. Video's not over yet, you got to watch this one. This one is so important, definitely watch it if you haven't already. Click on it and I will see you over there.